All right, all right, all right. Welcome to another episode of the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your host, Frank Delander. Today on the pod, we have a few of teammates from the soccer team here in Fresno, California, Central Valley, Fuego FC. I got Nathan Smith. I got Kristen Cheney. Fellas, say what's up to Bring the Juice real quick one time. How we doing, Frank? It's hey, good. It's, it's, it's good to be back. First we gonna rock, then we gonna fall, then we let it pop, don't let it go. Hey, man, I'm in the studio now. Christian, first time. What's good? It's good, bro. I'm excited, man. I'm uh, feeling pretty good right now. Feeling healthy. Feeling, feeling healthy. pretty good right now. I love to hear it. Haven't had much soccer on the pod really since you, so this is refreshing. Uh, you know, the soccer world I know is on the rise because there's some big tournaments coming up, I hear. But uh, let's start off real quick. A uh, quick word from our sponsors. As you know, this episode of Bring the Juice is brought to you in part by the American Pistachio Growers. If you want to perform like the pros, eat your pistachios, eat your nuts, kids. Y'all y'all eat pistachios ever? Love them, actually. Yeah. Great. I'm going to have to hook you guys up with pistachios, that little sideline protein, something slick like that. For the Pre travel. Game. Yeah. Pre-game. Pre-game, maybe in the hotel room elevator, Munching like, oh, the- shit, I need a little... On the plane. Boom. Exactly. Perfect. Snack those puppies up. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't think people really have a good grasp of how a young soccer player could get into the professional level. So I kind of want to start with that because I think football, people know, like, you, know, you start playing Pop Warner, you go to high school... You try to play college, then you go to the NFL. It's kind of that or bust. Soccer, everyone has their journey. I know you guys had different ones. What would you say your perspective is? You don't have to go, you know, kindergarten, but like once you start getting into those high school years, how do you progress to make it to the professional level? Do you want to go? I mean, I would say, I mean, at least right now in today's day and age, man, uh, there's other routes, obviously, to, to make it, but I would say it's kind of the same thing, similar, man. I mean, you could ask Nate, like, he went to UCLA, for instance, you know? I mean, there's a lot of guys that go to college that make it through the draft or they get the connections that they get through college, and on top of that, you get the education behind it. I right. mean, that's just the American way to do it, I believe. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, if you're in another country, I believe, you could probably go a whole other route through academy systems and youth systems like that, but... Since there's not so many of that here, I mean, in my experience, I'd, I'd probably take the college route. Yeah, so what was your experience personally then? Oh, well, I mean, me, I, I wasn't the best in school, bro, so it's like... Hey, not everyone is. <laughs> yeah, you know. T so over I, here freaking going UCLA on yeah. us. Yeah, that's what I'm like, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm, I, would, I would say the biggest thing is you got to make soccer the main thing. Like right. education can come second, but like soccer has to come first or whatever sport you play. Like if you really right. want to make it in it. Yeah. That's got to be your number one priority. You're a student athlete, not necessarily. You're in, uh, yeah, exactly. Exact, Flip the roles. Right, Flip exactly. the roles. Or well, just like if you just make the sport your life, you know? I mean, that is the reality of things, too, yeah. like with any sport. Because if you want to go the school route, okay, and I think, you know, I have kids that I help get recruited, like at least see if they're willing to play at the next level or not. Because a lot of people think they want it. Everyone wants to say, oh, I'm D1 bound. Everyone. I used to be the biggest flex when you're in high school, bro. Yeah. Everyone wants to be the guy who got the cool sweatpants and the in the jerseys on the wall behind them someday. Mm-hmm. Like everyone wants that flex. Yeah. But one, you got to be a dog. That's first things first. If you don't, if you don't got it, you don't got it. Okay. But also, like you got to find the right fit for you. Get in front of the right people recruitment wise, or get yourself in, into these academy programs, which will create opportunities to get in front of these college coaches. Yeah, well, I mean, even even with soccer, it's like it's it's such a global sport that like you you could sign pro at fifteen, yeah, and or uh, sixteen, seventeen, but you before you're even eligible and to for go college, to college, you know. Right. So like, I think it's kind of different for soccer because so many players are, are in other countries are just trying to make it pro at fifteen, sixteen, right? Whereas here, they have to wait till they're twenty, you know. Or eighteen to go to college. right. You got to go to college for like so you're a couple little, years. You're a little behind, eligible. so you kind of have to look at it in a different different light. Does it? How big? I mean, I know like Fresno. I don't know if it's the biggest soccer heavy region in the world, but like, what is? How, I mean, how many 16, 15, 17 year olds are going pro right now in the United States? A couple. I, did, I would say a handful. A handful, handful of like 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 ten, like probably ten a year, ten a class. Yeah, probably t- with that through throughout the MLS clubs. Yeah, I think there's like twenty two. I would say like 
15, 16, 17 year olds. Wow. Yeah, there's a, there's a handful. Right, I mean, we, yeah. had, we had one against or even e- even yeah. in yeah league even one is a, even is league a one there is contract as well yeah. man like and the championship you see it sometimes yeah but so yeah, it is a handful it's definitely not a like the vast majority of people that are, but they have that opportunity if they if they want it and they're, they're you know they have that dog in them and are can compete with men right how do you i mean how do you make that like what's the determining factor i'm just thinking because not getting too much in it but Let's say you were to play a certain tier of soccer where maybe, obviously, um, you know, Manchester United guys are getting paid more than the Fuego right now. So, uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, I, I'm saying that like in a humble, yeah. nice yeah. way, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, no. at what point do you say like, hey, do I go chase a little bit of bread and skip an education or go chase the bread, hope I could capitalize at this tier of professionalism kick ass, be the dude, move up to the next level, move up to the next level, and eventually become the dude at, at a Premier League type. Like, like, how do you, is it, you think, that's, yeah, that's you just possible. gotta make that decision you within gotta, your family? You, you gotta have a plan, or you're, you gotta have dual citizenship. One of your, be able to get a European passport where you can go to Europe at 16 or 15 yeah. and join the academy. It'd be hard to do that here. But other, other than that, you just have to train and just know once you turn 18, like your your kind of goal is to go to Europe right? and skip college. And then once you're 18, you can sign with these clubs. But until you're 18, you need a dual citizenship. So soccer definitely. Or another passport. I mean, the more we're airing it out, it sounds like soccer is probably the most primary sport where you're like college ain't it. Like, for like, sure. Oh, no, like if you're, sh- if, that's, if, that's the last thing. If you're, if you're going for it, like, yeah. bro, if we, got a t- if we got a shot, we're going. Like. Go back and get your education right now because it it doesn't matter if you could sign with that team. You are signing with that team. It sounds like for sure. If so, it's the right, yeah, for sure. Because other than that, there's it's just gonna take too long. By the time you're 21, leaving college, you're or, washed at that point, right? I mean, there's like I said, these kids are playing Champions League games at 18 yeah. years old now. Yeah, you're, 17 you're, you're kind of almost like old at like you know? 22, 23. Like that's like, crazy. And it's your past. Soccer. Whereas you come to college at that age, it's like, oh, you're prime for the pick. Yeah, you're you a know? freshman all yeah. of a sudden. You know, so damn. So there's really levels to it. it so really if you're, is. I mean, would you say then like, out of the top percentage of guys that mm-hmm. skip college in the United States, they'd rather go play in a professional league versus a division one school for instance Mm -hmm. how how many is that like out of the top 100 rated players for the graduating class of senior and high schools right now how many of them are going to go play pro versus they're committed to a ucla or like a a north carolina or something i I would say the the majority of the kids in In the top 100 and yeah the top one if you took the top 100 kids from mls academies sure i would say probably about half and half are going pro and half are going to college to the best universities yeah, and that's the best universities though and yeah. that's not based off of like that's not based off the decision it's based off hey the top half has an opportunity to play pro the bottom half they don't have that opportunity so they're going to go the college route it's like you have the these mls uh clubs with all these resources and it's like almost better than a college you know <clears throat> in some sense and you're already in it so that i think it's just an easy transition whereas it's like say you took someone from fresno that wasn't really playing yeah in an mls club at 18 yeah you should probably go to college right but if you're in the, you're in the system it's like you know say if you're going to fresno state and you're already there right right, right. four years you know you're in front of these coaches the staff <laughs> it's easy to then just stay there and not go to college or they can go to call most of these clubs pay for college how would you compare it then to like the major league baseball system? How there's single A, double A, triple A, they're all farm teams essentially mm-hmm. feeding into the majors. Is it similar at all to where like like okay, so the Fuego right now, do you guys are you guys allowed to get picked up by other teams if if so if a team called right now? For sure. Yeah, 100%. They would nobody would say anything bad. They'd just be like, Yeah. Hey, better opportunity came. I mean, got it, called up essentially. If if you're in a contract, like they could they could buy you out. Sure, you have a clause, a buyout clause, or if you're not on a contract, you can negotiate. Like you know, it just kind of depends on your contract. Yeah, but there's free agency. It'd be like moving up though, not moving like within the league. Yeah, it'd be moving up. Yeah, no, yeah, moving course. up. Yeah, yeah. Of course. They they would they would for sure promote that. Right, right. Especially with the young Especially players. Especially if they get a little bit of money out of it. 
Yeah. That's how you make money as a club. You know, you want to sell your players and well, that's move how you, them along. Yeah, especially in Europe, that's how they do everything. Here. So you guys want to do, they, I mean, so Fuego, obviously you want to win games, you want to win championships, mm-hmm. but they want to develop players to move on to the next level. Yeah? Yeah, well, of course. Everybody wants to move up. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, like, it's, it's like, are you guys playing in it to get moved up then, per se, or what? I mean, we're playing. I'm playing for the hometown. You're trying to rep uh, the name. Yeah, five, five, nine. I'm, yeah, I'm going, I'm going for the town. But, I mean, you just never know with football, you know, or soccer. You can move up. Things change, so. Yeah, for sure. Ripping the city, of course. That's all you guys are trying to do. Yeah. Well, yeah, is there a young, is there a foremost, you know? I mean, for people like us, you know, like. That's where we come from. We gotta, you know, you gotta come back, and when you get the chance to, a lot of people don't get that chance, man. Like to, to rip their hometown, oh, their dude. city, and put it's, it on. For it's the bro. it's the best feeling ever. Yeah, and it's un- it's un- unexplainable, honestly. I like it, but you know, uh, it's always it's always good to be here and just wear it. So for that, yeah. But moving up, if it happens, it happens through the uh, you know the success of the team first. So it's like right. Like you said, it's, there's a lot of situations that happen where, you know, like if you ball out, some team could come knocking at your door and then you got a whole other option, you know, so. Is there, are the people game. hawking you guys play pretty well, you think? Like you think there's always someone watching? I mean, there's always someone watching, yeah. but like, have you guys personally seen, like, you guys don't have like scouts come to practice necessarily? Not not to practice, but for sure games. For yeah. For sure games, like, uh, I mean, and we're just with the Open Cup. Like right. we're kind of playing some of these teams in the other divisions, and bro, he's banger in the Open Cup. I don't know if you even seen it, bro. Oh, uh, was that the goal? Oh, bro, yeah. the goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jake, we're gonna have to throw a clip of that. Bro, that's true. That's that was ESPN goal. top ten. Oh, top Did you get a plaque for that? Nah, he should have. Nah, hey, we might need to make a plaque for that or something. Oh, uh, bro, it was unreal. I was right there too. It was crazy. But that. Did game you know? Did you know it went in when you hit it, or are you like, damn. I mean, I kind of seen it go in, but <laughs> it lined up. It lined up. Hey, they, 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 they sneak in sometimes. Yeah. Oh, bro, that did. was a bang. <laughs> was actually insane. I was like, bro. Uh, before we continue, I'll take a quick word from our sponsors. Uh, you guys like sandwiches, right? Of course. Of course, right? So there's a deli in Fresno known as Dervos Deli. It's the premier deli in the 559. You talk about rep in 559, you better start eating at Dervos Deli. They got this, the, all their sandwiches, they got nice crispy toasty bread, nice aioli on it. Their ingredients are so just fresh. I mean, the lettuce has that crisp to it. The tomatoes are cut not too thick, not too thin, the perfect amount. The chicken's cooked to perfection. You just, you got to love it. So check out Dervos Deli. They're crisp cut fries too. Dervos Deli. I mean, they're... Where are they located? All right, so right across the street from St. Martin Center, kind of by Doghouse. Uh, the old Deli Delicious. Yeah, next it's, to the Red Wave Liquor. Next to the Red Wave Liquor. Don Pepe's is right there, Don too. Don Pepe's is right behind yeah, me. Shout out to Don Pepe's, too. Yeah, <clears> and they don't pay the bills, but shout out to Don Pepe's. No free shout outs. Secondly, I know you guys aren't uh, in business banking yet, per se. But if you ever do, you need to check out Fresno First Bank. Because Fresno First Bank is a local bank to Fresno, the community, that have a strong connection with business owners to help them grow and succeed. You walk in there, never too busy for you. Always giving you a high five, a fist pump, you know, a little hey, you catch that Fuego game last night, some some slight like that. They uh, are definitive banking experience. Going to treat you like family and take a sound business approach to what you need. Fresno First is where you need to be. That's all I can say about that. So you know, I want to go more a little bit back into just the general side of soccer. All right, so we're in the United States. We're in Fresno specifically. I played soccer for a long period of time. There's some dogs out here. Definitely producers. There's athletes out here, okay? There's athletes. We were talking about this before. Had an episode with basketball league that we're trying to start called the Fresno Pro-Am. I mean, I played football at Fresno State with a lot of dudes from around here. Like, there's a lot of dudes, if you look around, who came through the Valley at some point that are in the league, that have gone to the Olympics, that are pros, that are Super Bowl champs, that are all these things. Yeah. Talent is around here. What is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pin this on Fresno, but and I think the short answer would be these other countries don't have as many sports as the United States. But what did what is gonna need to happen to get soccer to have an incline on popularity in the United States? What do you think is the one to? I'm gonna ask both of you this. I want two separate answers. Go ahead. I would say the World Cup. They, they, the World Cup needs to be in the United States or the United States men's team needs to win it? It'll be in the United States in 2026 and I think then it'll be like, okay. It's time? Look at this. Like, yeah, like, 
I just, yeah, that, that would be my answer. I think by 2026, it will be, you know, the number one sport. In the United States? I believe so. Is that a hot take? It could be. Chaney, what you got, bro? I mean, dang, I don't know about that. <laughs> by 2026, the number one sport? I'm saying, like... That'd be crazy. If there's 100 high school seniors that are playing athletics at Buchanan High School... Hmm. Is soccer going to have an increase in percentage over baseball and football at that point? No, I don't think so. But I think it, you maybe have... It's got a big soccer. bump. It's got a big bump is what you're saying? More opportunities. Well, I think we have by then for sure, especially like leading up to that. Dude, 2026 is four years away. Yeah. Because World Cup's in what? Like a couple months? Yeah, in like three, three, three weeks, I think. Couple it's end of November, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, November 20th. Where is it this year? Qatar. Where's that at? You should... <laughs> the Middle East? Yeah. You guys going? Yeah. Of course not. I had, nah. can't. No, nah. that's too far. Have you guys ever been to the World Cup? I've never been. Mm. Damn. All Tell right. So time. you think? So why? So why do you think the World Cup? Like just because the hype? Yeah, I just think the hype. And like, I think in 1994, it was in the U.S. and like that kind of brought a lot of attention to it. Right. I think it's just like the world's game. So I think it kind of brings everyone together. I definitely think it has like an Olympic feel. Where like. It's easily one of the best sporting events in the world. I mean, I know it's called the World Cup, but mm -hmm. Olympics is up there. I mean, we're American. Super Bowl's up there. World Series. Yeah, game whatever. seven. Yeah. But game seven. That's what yeah, I'm saying. Maybe. It's it's hard to beat, though, the World Cup. And, like, I don't know. Like, there were some bangers. I just think, shit, I was at your house some years, Nate, where, like, we'd watch we the United that. States play. And that was the when the U.S. team even World just Cup. scores a goal, like yeah. the city goes erupt, at least that we were in. And I'm not like I love playing soccer. I don't watch soccer. I don't yeah. watch Premier League. Like some I know I have a lot of friends that are they're in fantasy soccer leagues and shit like that. But Crazy. this is a whole different perspective. And like I had my doses of representing Team USA to where like there's so much pride in it. I can only imagine what these guys are. They're they're feeling and if it's at home, like they have to be, they gotta produce. Like the pressure is literally like it, it won't be any higher than the United States playing at home in a World Cup game. I feel like. Yeah, but is that a, that's a must win? That's a must win. It, yeah, I mean, a lot of countries that host the World Cup win the World Cup. Home field advantage. Home field advantage. I believe that. But yeah. it's it's hosted between us, Mexico, and Canada. In Canada. So, yeah. That's right. Um, it's North America, huh? Well, North yeah. America. So I don't know. Where's where our is. fields at? L.A. We have one. Uh, in LA. uh, Levi. Oh, we're going San Levi. San Francisco. Yeah. That's lit. Yeah. Lit. I think Dallas, MetLife. Probably Met Dallas. Life. Yeah. Jerry's World. New York. Probably. I know they have it in that state. Kind of Probably Mexico. Atlanta. Yeah. Monterey. Yeah. Monterey. Toronto? <coughs> Montreal. I mean, you'd, I mean, you'd imagine. Oh, probably, probably Mexico Vancouver. City. Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah, Mexico yeah. City for Mexico sure. City. Where else in Mexico? Probably just Mexico City. I'm not too sure. I think Mexico. it's uh, Mon Monterey. Yeah, Monterey. Monterey. What's the team? Yeah, Monterey. Monterey. Yeah. With the, <laughs> with the mountain on the backside? Yeah. <laughs> the blue and white. You got to yeah. have those scenic fields. Oh, the stadium's oh. crazy. Really? Yeah, Mexico, uh, the Azteca in oh, Mexico man, those, City. Hey, those games oh, it's like 110,000. Those games are going to be 110? That's the big house in Michigan, bro. That's a big game. Yeah. God damn. That's like every every time they play. <laughs> and at uh, elevation. So I'm thinking right now, like, okay, 2026, that's World Cup in the United States. Let's say we have a stud 23-year-old on the team. He's He's... 18 right now we got those we got those we're safe we're safe there's 2026 20, are we have a young team for our national yeah team. by 2026 20, we'll be a lot more seasoned we'll be a lot more like we have a lot of players over overseas playing i don't even know do we qualify for this one yeah we're qualified yeah, we're, we're playing england i think we're playing england on black friday yeah i might be at your house bro Hold it up. might have to. Nah, I mean, hey, yo, pull up to the trap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's electric, though, man. Like, that's something like the United States beats England in one of those first games. And we play Iran. That's a win. Should be. Yeah. Should we be. We would expect, but we, we play, we've been playing pretty bad. Who's our group? It's England, Iran. And Wales. Okay. We got a chance. Beat England. We beat England before. I mean, what if they tied England and then they won everything else? Yeah. 
It's all right, though. But we'll see. <clears throat> so, you know, I mean, do, did I answer my own question then by saying we're behind because we just have other sports to offer here in the United States? Or what is it? Possibly. The yeah. emphasis isn't on, like, the soccer, like, the the, the soccer culture. You right, know? right. We're so focused on... Football, baseball, basketball. Honestly, you know. Yeah. Like, everybody wants to go be LeBron James or Patrick Mahomes or Babe Ruth, for instance, you know. But, like, no one... You know, nowadays, you hear a lot more kids, oh, I, I want to be Messi, I want to be Ronaldo, right. you know. But, you know, we're still really far behind, whereas everybody, everywhere, you should see how the, how the cultures are. South America, all the way to, like, Europe, bro. They have nothing else to do but like watch the sport and be around it so of course you have an advantage just off that solely just the culture in itself you know like it's football it's all soccer soccer it's right, soccer right. Every, everything they do is around that game you know how i mean you guys have played in these places is it electric playing overseas or out of, out of state out of country <laughs> yeah over overseas is cool oh yeah but like the people are, I mean, it's is it definitely cool? Definitely feel the a amplified because yeah, that's one, what that. it's just there's on, juice over there. Yeah, it's on the line, and you're just kind of you know, like I mean, I played there like with Galaxy when I was in the academy and like the U.S. But like, it's just something where you, you just feel like you know they treat you as an outsider, like they don't yeah. want you to belong. You know, they don't like Americans. They 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 don't. I mean, I honestly, don't know. no, bro. They, I wouldn't like us either, bro. Yeah. Why would you? Not at all. I've been to a few places. I, I used to actually, yeah. I've lived in Armenia before, and that was really where it was like, you really were an outsider there. They didn't like you. Like, you felt it, you know? Mm. I was in uh, Malta recently, and oh, it's amazing, you know, the, the support and all of that. But man, when, when you're like beefing with one player on the team, yeah. especially if he's a local player or something, oh, they're on your ass. Uh, you're an outsider for sure. You know? <laughs> like, you're an outsider, like, like straight up. They, and they have their own language as well. You don't know, so it's like, right. Uh, you're getting, like, you're just getting bitched at. At this point, you're kind of like, ah, oh, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> you start throwing hands. Yeah. Hey, bro, who's talking? Yeah, but it is what it is. But no, yeah, definitely, definitely a different vibe, bro. The, like especially for big games, like because when you're like when you're playing for like in the league, like you get relegation and promotion, and like when you start losing games, the pressure's on. Like, yeah. A lot of stuff happens like the, in, within the club. You could feel it. The, the, the manager, like the, the the coach, yeah, he starts feeling it because you know after three or four games, like imagine in these leagues, you're qualifying to possibly go to a tournament. I mean, who who knows? You know, if you go to Europa League, if you go to Champions League, if you get finished first in the league, you go to Champions League. So it's like a lot of people they play for the league so that they could win, and when every time they win, they get money, and every time you start losing, the whole club is losing a lot of money. Right. On players and for everything that they got to do. It's a business, bro. Oh, bro, it's, it's crazy because out there, really, like, you get that vibe. So it's like the games are that much more important. Like, I remember we were sitting in, like, tw like 12th place. There's 14 teams, you know. Bottom two get relegated. And it, it was just, like, the guys are threatening not to pay you. The coaches are just like, hey, you know, like, I'm about to get fired anyways. <laughs> like, wow. You know, like, crazy. Dude. So you're feeling to yourself, like, what's about to happen? Yeah. You know? So every single game, you have to go for, like, everything it's like a like literally like do or die you go or you get fired pretty much so it's like dude it's you, a business oh bro you had to perform it was crazy no I, I mean i don't think people realize like this whole thing that people watch on espn they bet on they do all this buy the jerseys of all this like yes it's entertainment but like it's also young dudes who are just playing their sport they loved at one point and now they're in it to make money or to go to the top. Yeah. But if you don't perform, you get fired from your job, which means you get cut or you're getting benched, which means, hey, you aren't good enough. This other guy's literally better than you. Yeah. Like yeah. you suck and he's just better than you. <laughs> and it's like, and I mean, like for me, I mean, it, dude, it takes like you guys have learned like at this point in your life, like. Like, Nate, like, when you got released at one point, like, bro, it's a shitty day. It's tough. It's tough, but... But you got to learn how to be a professional, eat it on the chin, and keep moving forward. Well, you got to know who you are. Like, like Nate's a dog, you know? Like, you gotta, I know Nate's a dog, but I'm saying, like, maturity. it takes a sense of maturity as an athlete to be able to start dealing with that type of shit. Because at one point, you're telling me when you were in high school, everyone was the top of the top of the food chain at one point. You're the top of the totem pole. You're the shit. The bees knees. The cat's pajamas, bro. You're, 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 you are the you are the top of the top. And then you get into a bigger fish tank, and there's some other big fish swimming around. You're like, okay, 
I could hold my own. And I think, again, I say it on the show all the time, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. I truly believe you play with dudes that are better than you, you lift with guys that are stronger with you, you're going to get stronger. You're going to get better at your craft. But that being said, eventually you start getting dropped in these fish tanks or maybe there's these situations where... Hey man, like maybe they, maybe you didn't get a fair opportunity compared to another guy. In soccer, especially any sport where they're paying you, like if they're paying one dude a hundred thousand dollars and they're paying another dude ten thousand dollars, that's an investment into the business essentially. To where if the guy who is getting paid ten G's messes up, they'll cut his ass and they'll put another ten G guy in. Oh, yeah. If the ten if the hundred thousand dollar guy messes up, well they're gonna give him a couple more chances because them just eating that hundred G's is a little more of a hit to the organization, a little more hit to the business. Yep. So when I say like, it is political, it is political. And like, I'm sure you guys have been in situations like T, I know you have, where like, sometimes they bring in a washed up, like a big name or they, uh, I mean, in, in college, like a guy transfers from Alabama. Well, maybe he just isn't that good at football. There's a reason he transferred from Alabama. But the fact he came from Alabama, if he were to come to a place like Fresno State, why would he not be at front of the depth chart? Mm-hmm. Nobody else got recruited Alabama at one point. He yeah. must have that dog in him. Mm-hmm. But, bro, like people BS. The, like, I'm sure you guys have also played people where it's like, how's this dude here? You see, you see that sometimes in uh, in college. I mean, it it just everyone's kind of there for a reason. I would say, like, whether it's you know, you have a guy that's obviously the best at academics. Maybe he plays soccer. Not the best, but you you're gets the team GPA a, up a little bit. You're gonna, you're gonna get a chance if you work hard, you know, and do the right things, especially in the classroom. Like there's opportunities like that, so you just kind of gotta know your role, right? Embrace that. You think the from an athlete perspective, just like straight up Tyree Kills of the world, you know, they're from the United States. Like, do you think if we had our best athletes only focus on soccer, we'd take over? How long would the takeover be? Could you imagine Tyree Kill running on the wing? <laughs> <laughs> Rashida? Oh, bro. In real life. I'm saying, like, you take the slots. Let's say you take every slot slot wide receiver and every DB from around the NFL, and you you know ahead of time they're going to be this dog of an athlete. And you start putting them in soccer training at age 12. All right? That's, till, that's still too late, I know. But right. that's good. But they got this freakish athlete yeah. ability. And you got a dude as big as freaking, let's say you have a LeBron James at goalie who could just take everything. Yeah, bro. The United States would be unstoppable. So we have the talent. Oh, we have, we have the best we, athletes we have in the world. We have the best athletes, yeah. Every, it's not even close. There's no comparison. It doesn't compare. Imagine if our track runners and, and wrestlers and all these people were focused on touching a football and stopping players from running by them. Right. No, there'd be clamps. There'd be clamps, bro. No chance. Because how fast... Okay, the fastest dude in your guys' league, is he... Is Does anybody touch... Who's, like, super rapid? Mike? Mike was, <laughs> Mike Mike was the fastest on our teams. I'm faster than Mike, you bro. Not, hey, right? I'm Mike What's McFarland? Mike running the 40 I'm faster than Give Mike. or take. Give or take. Uh, we don't really run the 40, so it's hard to tell, but... I think he got like we wear these GPS monitors. Well, okay, what's his top speed? What's his top he's speed? He's 18 years old though, bro, and he's like he's pretty fast. What's his top speed? I think he he almost touched like a 10 per second, 10 point. You yeah, know. but did you get your miles per hour on there? Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think we do. I think we did our top speed. I don't know what. Yeah, what's his top speed? speed? I mean, I don't, I don't know his top. speed. I don't know speed. what the measure. I don't have it on my phone right now, but ah, T, I wanted to know, yeah. man. The little bra things, right? Yeah, the yeah. Bras, little the sports bras. bras. It's like per second, right? Is that what? I actually really wish I would have like got more of those. Cause I do. I, I, we I didn't do really have the opportunity to like take off. A I remember one like time we lined there. up and we raced, and I had Sharif, and I left oh, Sharif. Yeah. I do remember twice. We raced. Well, sometimes and like Frankie didn't want to race me. By the way, Marco. Frankie, yeah, he didn't want to race me. Marco's got the wheels. Marco's slow too. Sometimes you get like, I don't know. This is my at least running athletic career that I've had, where like you think you're top speed, but when you're chasing like a ball, you hit that extra gear and you could really turn that shit on like level yeah. twelve. Sometimes it's some people. Sometimes just got better angles than you. You know. That's why you get physical with that. That's how you got it. Ah, baller man, baby. Get in uh, there. I got 11 yellow for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, it's totally off topic now, but I'm just thinking, I can't stop thinking about the Hezbollah 
comments we had earlier. So, to describe Hezbollah, am I saying his name right? Hezbollah. Hezbollah? Sorry, Hezbollah. My bad. Hezbollah. Hezbollah. What's this guy's deal? Okay, he's just the short guy who has a condition and, like, is now, like, a UFC fighter or some shit. Like, Wait, he's a UFC fighter? He's not, no, he's not fighting anybody, but he hangs out with, like, Khabib and all that. And he's just, like, a superstar. Wait, how old is Hezbollah? 20. 20, yeah. He's 20? Dude, he's, like, this big. But why did I think he's he was sponsored. a kid this whole time? I know, because he, cause he looks like a kid. Yeah, yeah he's like, got a condition where he looks like he's a baby. Twin, what's the condition called? He's 20 years old? I don't know. We could, we could get a fact check on that. Uh, yeah. I'm, I just found him. He's from where Khabib's Russia. from, I'm pretty sure. Bro, that's Russia. insane. I had no idea he was 20 years old. Yeah. He's like he George Foreman? Cool? He like, he like he drinks and stuff. I didn't know. I thought it was cool because he was, he was a dope ass, to, like, seven year old or something. <laughs> there was another. He was trying to fight a kid. Was, or was the other kid? He was trying to fight Conor McGregor, Gregor, bro. The, oh, ah, <laughs> I think someone's going to, like, punt him one no, time. No, nah, there's no nah, way you can nah, let him nah, fight. Illegally, nah, cannot let him fight. No way. Dude, I don't think someone's going to. I don't think the UFC is going to let him fight, but I think he's going to. Piss someone off one time. They're just gonna punt him across the room. It's gonna be like a Austin Powers mini me scene where I'm not talking shit, but I'm just like, dude, I've seen some videos of him like slapping some UFC fighters. And one time, someone's gonna get slapped the wrong way and just give him a little shove. And he he'll might have, go fly. He'll have Khabib right yeah, there by nah, him. I don't know, bro. I'm just Come saying. On, I've watched some Twitter boy. videos and I'm like, and he's. Slapping him and slap. He's you a slap good a, fighter. He's a good fighter. But you slap a grown ass man in the face too many times, you're gonna get a little pissed off. Yeah, one yeah, time. I would love fighter, to though. see that. I would love to Some see. Some fighters that. can take it. I feel like. Hey man, if you're grappling, like just. It's gonna be a fan. It's gonna be a yeah. fan. You tell me, random fans are gonna walk up to Nate Diaz once. and slap him in the dome? No. Nah, no, I wouldn't. But maybe a <laughs> Hasbula who's three feet tall could. It's a wild situation. Playfully, I would hope. I would hope nobody punched the kid. I mean, the guy across right. the room. Yeah, I, right. I would hope. I would hope. <laughs> I'm just saying, he's 20 years old. He has his reputation going. So there's yeah. gonna be a scandal at some point. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I believe so. I, I do. Agree <laughs> you see with what him. I mean? I agree with him. Someone's gonna like some fan randomly <laughs> just gonna come up and just some drunk guy in a Vegas UFC is gonna <laughs> well, the thing is, stick I, his leg I, out. I think and he's just, only in Dubai and Russia. Dude, he only he's travels been, to the mi Middle East and uh, Russia. Due to, no, bro. He's been on Barstool Sports in New York. No, nah, that uh, I think they went out there for that. Caleb Presley went out there. I think, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I that's podcast goals, bro. He, yeah, travel he travels like to them. No, nah, but he went to the UFC match a couple days ago. That was in uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Huh. Damn. That's how the note got him. Damn. <laughs> yeah, nah. He's an interesting fella. He'll be at all the World Cup games. It's in, yeah. What did he? Nah, he's you don't think dog. he'll go to Qatar? Maybe. Maybe. I wouldn't. He? I think he right. could. Slap Namor for nice. You're probably getting paid for appearances out there. Facts. <clears throat> money now. I mean, it's crazy how like I, I even saw today Anderson Silva's fighting one of the was it Jake Paul Logan Paul one of the Pauls yeah bro, bro it's so it's it. such a joke at this point. What's going on with that? To well, where the thing is, why don't they beat him? Like. His, Why don't they beat his ass? How old is Anderson Silva? Like bro, 50. I don't care. It's Did you Anderson see him? Silva, bro. Yeah, it's still Anderson Silva. Like, you think you could take Chuck Liddell? Do you think I could take Chuck Liddell? No chance. No I would chance. not mess with Chuck Liddell, bro. You think Jake Paul's knocking out Chuck Liddell? I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know how it works. I'm just saying, like, it's so fabricated, no, it's insane. Bro, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't imagine that, bro. Someone said that his last fight. Who did he fight last? Or he's a UFC did fighter, you? though, huh? Why Are they know, boxing? Hold on. They're boxing. This is off yeah, see, that's did, Do you guys watch the MMA? You guys watch UFC? Did you guys see Sean O'Malley versus uh, Peter? Peter? Bro, what was up with that? Yeah, I don't know. I heard it was fixed. I love Sugar Sean personally. I love Sugar. Bro, I like him too. But he even said after, he's like, I'm going to have to watch the tape on that. What's your shirt say? Last like year, short to bet the under. Sean O'Malley shouldn't have won that. No, he shouldn't have. That's not relevant, but he shouldn't have. That was crazy. It wasn't relevant, but that's what I was just. We were talking about fighting. I, was I kind of like, definitely think that. I don't think the fight game's rigged. I think this Jake Paul bullshit is is uncalled for. Like that, he's just he's made. just paying people to basically try to gain like popularity. I guess so. Sell so, uh, pay per views. Yeah, but no, I heard yeah. he, it's, he's selling. <laughs> like he's, he's doing it. He's doing I don't know, it. man. That's gonna die out real quick. I feel like. Yeah, also, yeah. I don't like how, that. how many fights has it been or is it like, like three four or years? five something? Three years like in a row. I like, don't like that professional running backs are fighting. Like Adrian Peterson. Bro, fought. what's up with that? Yeah, what's up with that? I he got know. slapped by Le'Veon. Right? Bro, you know how bad. 
that hurt. Adrian Peterson was like top tier dog in my life. Still is. He for sure, he diluted a little bit, yeah, bro. bro. He might get CTE from it. Nah, he's he's chilling, bro. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's not helping he's his case. Bro. I don't know, man. That, that's out of pocket. After though. he just went a whole NFL career at running back. Okay, <clears throat> another off topic one real quick. But I saw, uh, what is it? Two Bears, One Cave podcast, something like that. I don't know. Anyways, this guy was saying, this is his hot take, that he is a better athlete than Tiger Woods. And here's why. He said that if anybody with an athletic bone in their body was born into the, the Woods household with Earl Woods, Earl Woods, right? Is Tiger Woods' dad? I believe so. Earl Woods as your dad waking you up at two in the morning when you're a two year old to start swinging golf clubs, that you could be as good as Tiger Woods at golf. Obviously, I don't agree with that at all. Tiger Woods is the goat of golf without debate. One of the probably the one of the goat athletes. Talk about dynasties, but I mean, any response there, boys? Like, like think about it. Okay, Michael Jordan, different, different sport. Golf, you could golf athletes come in all different shapes, forms, sizes, heights, weights, nationalities. It doesn't. It really. It's not like you know. You're a point guard in the NBA. Most of them look yeah, pretty similar. I would similar, say golf, you don't different. need to be a freak athlete to, to golf. I would say. I mean, yeah, you have to be really, really skilled. skilled like, very, very, like... It's, it's a skilled. constant repetition sport. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, if you're... I think there is a point there. If you wake up every day at three at three years old... And if you, you want just, it. I mean, that's what makes Tiger different. He, he's course, obsessed with being course. great. It's, it's, like, it's Kobe mentality a little bit there, too. Oh, like, facts. Different. But... I don't think, I mean, can you make that assumption if you really think about it? If you have the the best training in the world from the womb, are you more destined for greatness? You would think, but I, I feel like so. it's all hypothetical. Like you've seen people they burst onto the scene and be the best in high school and then they fizzle out. So, Well, I think it also doesn't count because like Michael Jordan's kids aren't in the NBA. Shaquille O'Neal's kid who's big was he I, I mean he got a lot of handouts for just being Shaq's son yeah but like he hasn't stuck and he's as big as Shaq I mean sometimes you just don't have it yeah but sometimes you are better than your dad who is also good that you see both sides of it for sure of course <clears throat> well uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here you fellas got anything else you want to say to bring the news nation real quick go ahead appreciate you for having us on man T it's oh, tradition baby yeah. kidding me Hey, hey, it's 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 November, you know, Thanksgiving Eve's coming up. Five five nine's gonna be popping. Say what's up to the boys. Hey, don't be afraid to call your fellows and say and check up on your boys, bro. Don't be afraid of that. Yeah, for sure. Phone works sure. both ways. Yeah, oh that's that's literally at you, not me. Whoa <laughs> I don't have your number, so it can't be at me. No, I wasn't directing that to you. I'm just oh. thinking like, you know what? We're getting older. You don't see your boys as much as you like to. Oh yeah, it's good to check in, bro. Oh, for sure, it's good mental health, bro. Tap in, everybody. Always. Jane, anything? No, thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, I guess it's tradition for you guys, but we can make it a tradition if you'd like. Yeah, you know? bro. I appreciate you guys coming out. I, I appreciate the, the uh, Fresno Fuego setting this up. Uh, definitely need people to come out to those games and support once you guys start rolling again. I hope the soccer world keeps blossoming yet, and uh, we'll have you guys on soon. For sure, that's what I'm saying. I think once a year. It's once right. a year. It's tradition. It's once a year. It's so once a year. We'll have to get this thing rolling before uh, our season kicks off. <clears throat> yeah. I'm going to talk to some people on your operational side. Maybe we'll get like some like sideline reporting going or something like that. Oh, oh for sure. You've got to get the credential. Like, something hot. I don't have to get the, the parking pass. Get I just want to the parking pass. Like, yeah, right, they he's, know. Hey, you, hey, he's cool. He's cool, bro. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, fire me up. Another great episode. Bring the juice. Uh, we'll be sure to tag you guys on the gram. Get your piss hot this week, folks. Subscribe. Follow everyone. Uh, give us five stars, and we will see you next week on Bring the Juice.